of many well-known books, including the Narnia series and Mere Christianity, was a bachelor for most of his life. In his mid-50s, he married Joy Davidman. Within four years, though, she died of cancer. As he tried to make sense of the experience, he wrote a book entitled The Grief Observed. He begins the book with these poignant words, no one ever told me. It's odd that we talk so much about many things in church, important things, but are, there are some things we hesitate to talk about. And one of them is this whole issue of grief and loss. Right now, our church family is going through a time of deep grief and loss with the sudden passing of our beloved Pastor Warner on June 10th. Now, it's important that we acknowledge our great loss and grief. Everyone experiences loss and grief, but there's a difference between grieving in a way that promotes health and healing, which is good grief, and grieving in a way that creates more suffering and pain. Jesus instructed us that he came to help those who are suffering from loss, crisis, and trauma in life. Jesus came to heal, to release, to set free all those who are heavy burdened in life. When we observe scripture and the subject of grief, we soon discover that the Bible dignifies grief as a natural God-given way to respond to loss, trauma, and crisis. Therefore, we need to learn the process of grief and the best way to help someone through that process. So first, let's look at what grief is. What is grief? Well, grief is God's design for helping a person recover from loss. It's a therapeutic response and it's good grief. It's not evil or bad. Dr. Norman Wright defines grief as an intense emotional suffering caused by loss, disaster, misfortune, um, etc. It's acute sorrow, a deep sa sadness. The word is derived from the Latin verb meaning to burden. However you define grief, it's a natural part of our God-given image. The great saints in the Bible knew grief. Abraham mourned the passing of Sarah. Isaac was still grieving three years after his mother's death. David wept when his friend Jonathan died. And who can forget the grief of Job at the loss of his children? And hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah introduced Jesus as a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. When you see the life of Jesus unfold, we see that he wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, and he mourned over Jerusalem. The Bible regards grief as a very real thing. And grief is not bad or wrong. Grief is a response to the way God made us, creatures that love and care and hurt and we, when we experience loss. We feel grief because the Creator put eternity in our hearts. I read somewhere, we can run from it, but we can't escape it. We can hide from it, but it seeks us out. We can banish it from our minds, yet it returns to haunt us. We try to deny it, but grief is indescribably, undeniably real. That's why it's important to understand it and know how to deal with it. And the most common responses are to avoid, escape, get over, medicate, but that's not good grief, that's bad. So what do we do with our grief? And what does good grief look like? Well, to answer that question, I want us to look at a Psalm, Psalm 13. In Psalm 13, the psalmist is grieving. and From it, we can learn a lot about what good grief looks like. So if you have your Bibles with you there, you can turn with me to Psalm 13. It says, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God, give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death and my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fail. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. The first thing we see in this psalm is that we must bring our grief to God. The psalmist goes to God with his grief, and we shouldn't just express our grief, but we should direct it. And prayer enables us to process our grief in the presence of God. 
The second thing we see here is that in good grief, you allow yourself to feel pain. People who face their feelings and express them freely are more able to begin the journey towards hope. Unless we grieve our sorrows and losses, we'll never become emotionally healthy. We'll never achieve wholeness. Simply covering or ignoring the pain leads to disaster. If you try to bury your pain, it will come out in unhealthy ways. Only those who have responded to the pain can move ahead. And you can only respond to the pain when you know what you're feeling. So take time to identify your feelings and respond to the pain. Cry, talk to others, pray, but don't stuff your pain. If you're having to carry on at work at the usual pace and you've not had time to let the pain have its way with you, don't be surprised that it'll take you a little longer to move through the stages of grief. It's important to respond to your pain without hurting yourself or others in the process. So shed tears. Psalm 30 verse five says, weeping will endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And that brings me to my third point, hope in God. The third thing we learn about grief is that it brings us to a place of hope in God. We see this in verses five and six. He says in verse five, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. The truth is Psalm 13 is a bit short on answers as to why this happened. The response it does give us in verses five and six is a challenging one. The psalmist says, but I trust in your unfailing love. And that's very a very hard thing to do at times. But if we fall back on the unfailing love of God, the love that we've experienced over the years, it starts to make more sense. And for those of us struggling to accept this in whatever our current circumstances may be, the psalmist gives us a final word of reassurance, something to fall back on. God has been good to me. Remember, there's a reason for your faith. At some point, you've experienced God in some way. And it's that fact that we have to hold on to through the times when he seems to have forgotten us. Does that fact make everything okay? I would say no. The pain is real and devastating, along with the questions and confusion. But I choose to hold on to the unfailing love of God, his promise of salvation, and the goodness I've experienced in my life here on earth. And when things get too hard to bear, I know that God who made us and loves us and who made both the heavens and the earth will be with me. I want to thank you for joining me today. Take care, stay safe, and let your light shine.